Rupert, to my left here, is the closest I've been to anybody for a long period of time. But you all should at least know that this is Rupert and this is Lori. Uh, and we very much appreciate your help and your support. So I want to start, first of all, by saying a few words about the heartbreaking news from the Holyoke Soldiers' Home. On Sunday night, Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Sutters, and I first learned of the tragic situation that was unfolding at the Holyoke Soldiers' Home. As of today, there are 13 confirmed deaths at the facility, with at least six attributed to COVID-19. As someone who has visited this amazing place on multiple occasions and found it to be a source of joy and grace and comfort and kindness for the residents, their families, and the staff that works there, this episode is a gut-wrenching loss that is nothing short of devastating to all of us, and our hearts go out to the families and the loved ones and the staff who have been so horribly impacted by this series of events. We have public health experts on the ground conducting a thorough review of the health status of all the residents and the staff there, and Secretary Sutter's Lieutenant Governor Polito and I spoke to several members of the new team that's on the ground there this morning. And immediate steps have already been taken, such as implementing a clinical command team and testing all patients and staff at the facility. We're also deploying a wide variety of available resources to help them. This includes the National Guard, resources from the state's personal protective equipment supply, and medical professionals from other state facilities. Again, I want to extend, on behalf of all of us, our deepest sympathies to the members of the Holyoke Soldiers' Home community. They are many of our state's finest, all of whom served our country, and all of whom sacrificed on our behalf. Let me just say this in advance. In the short term, our primary focus is going to be on stabilizing and supporting the health and safety of the residents and their families. Uh, and we will get to the bottom of what happened and when and by who. As we continue in this battle against COVID-19, We've had to take unprecedented measures in an effort to stop the spread of the virus. About a week ago, as many of you know, I issued an emergency order requiring the closure of all non-essential businesses that was in effect until Tuesday, April 7th. I also directed the Department of Public Health to issue a stay-at-home advisory for all residents of the Commonwealth. And this weekend, the federal government announced an extension to the White House coronavirus social distancing guidelines that would be in effect until April 30th, as they anticipate the peak surge of the virus to come nationally sometime in the next two weeks. They stated that by extending the distancing guidelines through April, their hope is to mitigate the spread of the virus and reduce the amount of people across the country that could potentially contract the disease. Here in Massachusetts, We've taken some of the earliest and most aggressive steps in the country to slow the spread of this virus. And we must continue to be aggressive in our pursuits. So today, I'm announcing an extension of the timeline for all non-essential businesses to keep their physical workplaces and facilities closed to all workers, customers, and the public until May 4th. This new designation on essential services will take effect tomorrow, April 1st, at noon. This order also extends the 10-person limit on social gatherings until May 4th as well. With these extensions, we're issuing an updated list of businesses and organizations that provide essential services and workforces related to COVID-19 
that will continue to operate during this time period. I'll get into more details on what this entails in just a minute. But I want everybody to know that we appreciate the huge impact on our economy and on our daily lives that these decisions have, and they have not been made lightly. But based on the facts on the ground, our Department of Public Health guidance to extend the stay-at-home advisory outlining self-isolation and social distancing protocols needs to remain in effect through May 4th as well. I know this is difficult to hear, but we need everyone to continue to go without being around many of your family and most of your friends for your own health and safety and for the health and safety of your family, your friends, and others. As most of you know, my weekly visits with my 91-year-old father are phone calls. And as I said previously, neither one of us are very good at that. And I miss him. But that's just the way it is, and it's the way it should be, and it's the way all of us need to be as purposeful as we can be in dealing with the contagious nature of this virus. For state government workers, we're also issuing an extension of the guidance to the executive branch employees regarding working from home that we put in place previously, and that will also be extended until May 4th. And as we get ready to face what we're predicting to be the surge here in Massachusetts, these actions will improve our ability to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 and the impact the surge has on our healthcare system. Now we know that for many businesses and individuals, the measures that have been put in place have come at a very high cost. This includes the many local and homegrown small businesses in Massachusetts that we are so proud of. For them and for many others, it has not been an easy time, and we respect that. And we know that today's news won't make it any easier. But I know I speak for me and the Lieutenant Governor when I say that we've had many conversations with businesses across the Commonwealth that were deemed non-essential. And as concerning as that is to them with respect to the ongoing nature and potentially the future of their operations, they understand why we're doing it and why it's an important step to ensure the health and safety of them and their employees and others here in the Commonwealth. Because if we can limit face-to-face, -face, person to person contact now, we can slow the spread and get back to work as soon and as safely as we possibly can. Last week, as most people know, we, po we posted a specific list of business categories that we considered to be essential to supporting the Commonwealth through this emergency, which was based on guidance we got from the federal government. As a result, we've updated the categories, and some of these changes include clarity around the supply chain that supports other essential services, adding health care providers like optometrists and chiropractors, expanding the types of workers providing disinfectant and sanitation services. Based on the new guidance, we directed the Department of Public Health to issue an order with more specifics for hotels, motels, and short-term rentals like Airbnb. They are to be used for limited purposes only which include direct efforts related to the fight against COVID-19. For example, as housing for frontline healthcare workers or for Massachusetts residents who have been otherwise displaced from their homes or to house workers who are part of our essential business community. The point here is to reserve these spaces for people who need them as a result of circumstances that relate to or were caused by COVID-19 or other emergencies. Hotels and short-term rentals like Airbnb may no longer be booked for vacation or leisure purposes. People should really be using common sense on this one and should not be going on vacation right now. As we've said in our advisory and as many other public officials at the state, federal, and local level have said, 
people should be staying at home. And as we've stated before, essential businesses need to and will continue to operate. Restaurants and other businesses that sell food may continue to offer food for takeout and delivery if they follow the social distancing measures that we've put in place. Now we're extremely grateful for the many grocery store workers, gas station attendants, farmers, wholesalers, local, state, and federal government employees, and the many others who have continued to go to work and provide these necessary and essential services to the res residents of the Commonwealth. And this updated list will be published later today at www.mass.gov slash COVID-19. And while for the most part our dialogue and our conversation with the business community has been very productive um, and in some ways um, supportive of many of the initiatives that we've pursued with respect to defining essential workers and businesses, there is certainly confusion out there. But as we all know, this is an unprecedented situation. And employers with questions should review the COVID-19 essential, essential Services uh, Frequently Asked Questions, FAQs, created by the Executive Office of Housing and Economic Development, which we will update to reflect the revised list of essential services we're talking about today. And there is a way for businesses to contact and engage with economic development on their website. And over the course of the past several weeks, there have been literally thousands of back and forth uh, between our team and folks in the business community about clarification um, and engagement. But we would urge people to begin by reading through all the information first before they reach out. I'd also like to take a minute to once again thank everyone, especially those at home, for their diligence in adhering to the stay-at-home advisory that we put in place last week. People, for the most part, are doing the right thing, and they're not going to work, and they're not going to school. People are pushing off life events, like weddings and family reunions, and hardest of all, people are missing out on important time spent with loved ones. We know we've asked a lot of people, but there is more that must be done. Everyone should continue to avoid unnecessary close contact with others, and when you go to the grocery store or the pharmacy, Stay six feet away from the person nearest you. Go outside, go for a walk, go to the park, but don't do it in big groups. Don't play basketball just because you can, or sit on the beach all day with your friends. We cannot have big groups at our parks. We're considering taking some steps to deal with this, but everyone else needs to do their part too. Please continue to do what you can to avoid big groups. We know this is difficult, but these next few weeks will be critical to mitigating the spread of the disease and ensuring that our health care system is prepared for what is yet to come. As I mentioned earlier, we're also extending the guidance that we issued to executive branch employees to make sure we're keeping state government running and providing key services to those who need it while still protecting the health and safety of our workforce and the public. All employees performing what we've called non-core functions who are able to work remotely should continue to do so until May 4th. This end date matches up with our decision to extend school and non-emergency child care programs through May 4th. Excuse me, the closure of school and non-emergency child care programs through May 4th. Executive branch employees that have been required to report to work and need alternative child care arrangements are encouraged to review the list of exempt emergency child care providers. I would also want to mention and remind folks that many of the services offered by the Commonwealth that are public or customer facing are still being provided in person, but people should use online tools if they can, and many of the other ones are available by appointment only. Yesterday we talked about some of the ways our COVID-19 Response Command Center is working to establish expansions to the state's existing hospital capacity. The command center has begun working with long-term care facilities to establish dedicated skilled nursing facilities to care for individuals infected with COVID-19. This initiative offers an alternative location where individuals who are stable but still need medical care can be transferred to to recover relieving pressure on hospitals. 
As we planned for the surge, we requested and received approval for a field medical station through MEMA that will provide additional medical care capacity. This type of facility is intended to lower acuity care needs that increases local health care capacity during large-scale emergencies. The Commonwealth has requested three of these stations. This week, we received approval from the, national gov from the federal government to deploy a 250-bed facility at the DC DCU Center in Worcester. It will be used to treat lower acuity patients who still need monitoring. The facility will be stood up starting tomorrow when three tractor trailers will arrive in Worcester with the necessary gear and equipment. Just want to say how grateful we are to UMass Memorial and the City of Worcester for stepping up to partner and staff this facility for the Commonwealth. UMass Memorial will lead the day-to-day -day running of the facility once it's up with support from state and local partners. This facility is in another important building block in our efforts to expand existing health care capacity. And we are actively identifying other sites and partners for two other facility locations. Let me just close by saying this. The next couple of weeks are going to be critical in this battle. Everyone needs to play their part. People need to stay home as much as possible. Follow the essential business orders we've put in place. Use good personal hygiene and follow the social distancing guidelines to prevent the spread because it will make a huge difference in this fight to everyone here in the Commonwealth. At the same time, we understand just how much we've been asking of all of you. We've asked you to stay home, to not go to work, to not go to school, to skip weddings, to skip funerals, to skip going to the houses of worship that for many people are critical to their spiritual development. We've asked you to miss out on important, precious time spent with family and friends. We know we are asking a lot. But I want to conclude the same way I started, by pointing out how important it is, how purposeful it is, that we all take seriously these issues associated with distance. It is in many respects our single biggest weapon in battling COVID-19.